Um, so a script to set this up, how, how simple this is. This is our Pathfinder script. We've got a game object that has a, that's going to be our destination. We'll set this in the exposed variable. Uh, we've got a private uh, nav mesh agent. Incidentally, you need to include unityengine.ai if you're going to use a nav mesh agent, AI. Uh, and in start, we're getting the nav mesh agent and we're setting the destination. And the update, is, uh, we wouldn't actually need an update if the destination doesn't move. But if the destination happens to be something that it's chasing, then we'd have to update its destination uh, in basically every frame to keep it uh, tracking the uh, moving destination. So it's that simple. There's nothing more to it than that. Uh, this target point is a vector three point in the world. Uh, the navigation system will find the closest point on the nav mesh. Uh, so the target does not even have to be on the nav mesh. It will go to the edge of the nav mesh closest to that target and kind of stall there. Um, uh, how you choose the target depends on uh, the nature of your game. Uh, you might want to have an NPC track the player uh, to start an attack. Uh, you might have the character moving to a preset target, uh, an empty game object that's the exit or the location of treasure, or uh, as one of the advanced projects uh, uh, move to a, a location on the map clicked on by a mouse. Um, so here's, a, here's a, a path by mouse. So uh, we've got a camera. Uh, from which we want to cast a ray. This might be the overhead camera or it might be uh, your first person camera. Uh, and we have again this private nav mesh agent. And again, we've included in the engine AI. In start, we uh, cache the nav mesh agent. And in update, uh, if the mouse button zero is down, we cast a ray from the camera out to the mouse position. If it's hit something, uh, uh, within 100 meters of the uh, 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 camera point of view, we set the agent's destination to that hit point. And so now we have a mechanism for uh, uh, casting uh, hit points, uh, casting destinations out into our world. Um, uh, we also have, we, we saw static obstacles. We had some examples of static obstacles here in the uh, uh, here in the scene, we had these cubes that were marked nav mesh static in order to have them carve out a position. We also have a nav mesh obstacle. Uh, a nav mesh obstacle uh, is something that can move. Let me actually go to a scene with a nav mesh obstacle in it. It's working. Uh, so here's our our obstacle. Uh, it has on it a nav mesh obstacle script, uh, and uh, it's going to carve out a uh, an area around it that is uh, not navigable. Um, I think. This is supposed to be set to carve, carve only stationary. No, we want, in order for it to uh, make a dynamically changing nav mesh, we want to have this carve setting. So let me, uh, I'll just watch this area here as the, the, our little character uh, tries to navigate past it. And I believe I put an animation on this thing so that it's going to move around a little bit and alternately block the path uh, of my character. So you can see that the nav mesh is dynamically updating uh, what region is walkable. I almost made it through there, had to go back around the other way. Uh, there's another obstacle that blocked it and it's on its way up uh, the ramp to its destination uh, where it's going to stop when it gets to it. So that's the idea behind an obstacle. Um, here's a, here's a, a point and click world. 
uh, I've got uh, a top-down map here that I can click on. Uh, that's the camera that I've included in the script. And I can put different places and it will uh, travel to those different places. Uh, it'll adapt to the changing nav mesh as those two dynamic obstacles uh, try and keep it out. Uh, it can get pretty frustrated. Oh, almost made it. Uh, 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 not quite. Oh, it didn't make it again. There, it finally got through. Okay, so uh, 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 the uh, obstacles are pretty cool in terms of setting up dynamic situations that would prevent your character from crossing those things. Um, uh, by the way, these obstacles should not be tagged nav mesh static as they're going to move and as I mentioned, the car property needs to be checked. So uh, in both Pathfinder and Path by Mouse, uh, we did nothing to move the character. It was done by the nav mesh agent component. Movement was controlled by the exposed variable speed, how fast it can go, its angular speed, how fast it can turn, and acceleration, how fast it can get up to speed and also slow down. Um, with um, uh, more complex characters, things can get uh, quite a bit more complicated, uh, but I can, we, did take, we can take advantage of our idle chase jump controller and a slightly modified version of the target following AI script uh, that we developed. Uh, so here's uh, um, well, uh, let me just show you this example before I do that. Here's here's a terrain. Where's the terrain? Here's the terrain. Um, and I've I it, this is a, a terrain with steep valleys and hills and so forth. And uh, the the slope setting was set to uh, 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 thirty degrees. So any place that's steeper than thirty degrees, it made an unwalkable nav mesh. Uh, so it kind of confines itself to these valleys and uh, uh, troughs here. Uh, this little nav mesh agent is just like the one I just showed you, and it's going to uh, navigate its way to its uh, uh, target that is somewhere across the grid. Uh, it takes it a while to get through this little narrow region, uh, but it's following its nav mesh. Let me pause this for a second. And minimize this and set nav mesh so that I can see the nav mesh that it's following here. Uh, you, can, you can only see this when it's uh, actually, in, incidentally, that thing in front of it was it, its brain thinking. Uh, as it found its way through here. So with um, Mechanim, um, here now I have, I have an AI character, uh, the dude, and uh, I believe I can, uh, I'm somewhere here in the mesh. Um, my character is here and uh, the AI is on his way to try and find me. I'll get down in the canyon here. Uh, I'm the green dot. Uh, the, um, the AI is the blue dot that's following that path. Uh, and at some point, where is he? At some point, I don't know what direction he's coming from. There he is. Where, 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 where? There he is. So he finds me, and when he gets close enough, he jumps. Um, I, I did put a little ball there. Uh, that's the path that that uh, that character is following. 
So um, how do we do that? Um, well, first of all, uh, since the terrain is so jagged, I didn't. I disabled the can see function. I did this uh, by putting a. Uh, if the C distance is zero, then the can see just returns true. If can if C distance is greater than zero, it'll go through its usual logic. <coughs> I also don't want it to. Uh, um, uh, uh, navigate while it's jumping or idle. Uh, and so uh, I can stop the nav mesh agent. Uh, agent is stopped, is set equal to true, turns off the nav mesh agent. And then in the chase, uh, uh, I check to see if it's stopped. And if it is stopped, it's false, set to false. Uh, and then I ask the agent to reset its path. It, this calculates a new path to its target. Uh, and I'm keeping uh, the position of my uh, of, of my character that it's targeting, uh, plus some distance in front, the usual thing, so it doesn't come too close to my character. And I set the agent to that destination. Um, uh, the uh, nav mesh agent handles the movement, uh, but of course. Uh, uh, um, uh, there, there is some stuff in here about uh, uh, setting its animation so that it's, it's uh, doing the right animation while it's going. That's that little steering target that I put out in front of it. Um, the steering target are put on points at the edge of the nav mesh triangles that define the path. Uh, that nav mesh is all a whole bunch of triangles and uh, uh, the path is edges of those triangles that connect the shortest distance. Uh, and uh, I put the target there. We can also use that to show the, uh, the path that we're following here. So uh, uh, here now I have, this is a click by, uh, uh, a move by clicking. Uh, so I can click a point in the, in the, I can click a point here and uh, it goes to that particular point and then does its little jumping. Uh, there should be a path that it's following. Uh, the path is the connection of all the different corners that uh, lead it to that uh, path and it, it's, it's finding its way through the world to get to the different things. And if I click this, it resets its path and heads back the other way. Um, and so this is the kind of thing that we can do with this. So um, um, uh, incidentally, uh, oh, this is, this is the script for that uh, line. That's an object with a line render on it. Uh, I, I, I uh, start this coroutine updater uh, I've got the agent's path, which has corners, an array of, array of corners. Uh, and so I go through each of those and assign uh, those positions to the uh, line render. Actually, this one right here assigns the array of path corners to the array of positions. Here I'm just offsetting it so that it's up off the ground. And uh, it does this every so many seconds. So uh, that's a pretty quick blast through uh, the nav mesh. Uh, I'm gonna stop the share screen here uh, and uh, end the video and uh, this will be posted and you can see it in class or we'll talk about it in class. Uh, I'm gonna end the recording now. Bye, see you in class.